Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, the desktop edition, and dual boot it alongside Windows 10. I'm here in my Windows 10 computer where I want to install Ubuntu desktop alongside, and the first thing I want to do is launch the disk management utility. So I'm going down here to the search bar, just typing in disk and then space management and I'll see a create and format hard disk partitions option. Let's select this option and launch the application. Using this application, we'll be making some room for the Ubuntu desktop here on our current disk with Windows installed on it. Primarily, we just wanna focus on the C drive here don't touch anything else, otherwise you can cause system issues. Also, one thing I want to mention before continuing is I highly suggest to make backups of all your data before continuing if you haven't already done so. There's always a potential to mess up while installing an operating system and you wouldn't want to lose all your data. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go down and find the disk where I want to install Ubuntu desktop onto. So it's alongside Windows 10. And the disk here is disk zero. And we can currently see that I have this C drive here. It's got about 64 gigabytes. And this is the portion of the storage disk that I want to go ahead and shrink in order to be able to install Ubuntu desktop. So I'm going to right click on it and select shrink volume. Here in the highlighted portion, I'm given the maximum amount of space that I can go ahead and shrink the current storage by. So I have 43 gigs to shrink by, but I don't want to completely starve the Windows system of space, so I'll go ahead and specify a little less here. I'm going to go for about 32 gigs for the Ubuntu system, so I'm going to type in 32000, and that represents 32 gigabytes in megabytes. This will also allow me to have 32 gigs left over for the Windows side of things. You can, of course, split this up however you feel comfortable. Of course, your disk is going to have a different amount of storage available. Just make sure that the Ubuntu desktop has at least 32 gigs available or more if you have it. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Next, I'll go ahead and hit the shrink option. And what this will do is give us some unallocated space here at the end. We got about 32 gigs of that unallocated space here now. All right, and at this moment, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and create our bootable disk so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and let's go ahead and start on that portion. Now I'm on the ubuntu.com website and I'll post a link in the description below so you can visit the site as well. This is where I'm going to download Ubuntu desktop. So if I go ahead and hit the download section I'll get a drop down and we can see here that I have Ubuntu desktop and it's currently the 20.04 long-term support edition. And since that's the one I want to install, this will be for a 64-bit computer. So make sure that the processor on your computer where you're installing it is in fact 64 bits and go ahead and press the button to go ahead and start downloading. It might just take a few moments to go ahead and start the download, but once things load up, your download will appear at the bottom. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to go ahead and launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. So I'm going to go to the start menu and just search for Belena Etcher and then go ahead and launch it. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. All right, so what I want to do is select the image that I just got done downloading. So I'm gonna hit select image and I can see here that I have the Ubuntu 20.04.1 desktop AMD 64-bit for a 64-bit architecture. I'm gonna go ahead and select my image and click open. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the change button in order to select a drive where I want to flash the image onto. Here, I already have a USB selected, but you might have more than one USB, CD, or DVD, so make sure you select the proper one because all the contents of it will be erased in order to go ahead and flash the ISO onto it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I already have this one selected and I know this is the correct one, my verbatim, it's 32 gigs. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Finally, hit the flash button and you'll be asked for administrative privileges. Go ahead and hit yes and the flash will now begin. This will take a few moments and then we'll be ready to finish the install process. All right, and once things are done flashing, you can go ahead and exit now. It's time to go ahead and boot into BIOS 
and there's really two ways to do that here. One method, since I'm on the computer where I want to install Ubuntu Desktop alongside Windows, I can go ahead and hit the Start menu and search for something called Boot Menu. And the top result here is something called Change Advanced Startup Options. If you click on this, it'll launch a window where you can select the Restart Now option down here in Advanced Startup. And then in here, you can select the USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done creating and that has the Ubuntu desktop installer. The system will then restart into the installer. Otherwise, we'll take the second approach and make sure to have the USB, CD, or DVD inserted still into the computer where you resize the storage and you'll want to restart that computer and boot into BIOS in order to set your boot order. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, and on my computer, while I'm first booting up, there's a screen that tells me to either hit F2 or delete in order to get to my BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and spam that until I get into BIOS, as you can see here. And if I successfully got into my BIOS, I can see the screen here where it tells me that I have UEFI BIOS up in the left hand corner. The key to get into your BIOS might be something different, but we're looking for a screen similar to this. Now mine's a newer based UEFI BIOS, so I can use my mouse in here. And in mine, I can go ahead and select the boot menu by pressing the F8 key. And if I do that, I can see that I have a few options here. Well, the option I'm actually looking for is the UEFI verbatim store and go here for myself because that's the 32 gig USB I used in order to flash my image onto. So I know that's a proper one. Of course, yours might have a different amount of storage space, but instead of actually clicking onto this, I'm going to show you a different way which might look more like your own in order to change the boot order around. I'm going to do the advanced mode in my BIOS, which is F7. And then you might actually see a screen more similar to this one where you have various different tabs at the top. The one we're looking for is something called boot or boot order. This will allow us to change the order around of what devices get booted and in what order. And we're looking for boot option number one to make sure that this is actually selected as the same USB, CD, or DVD that I had just got done flashing. So mine's right here. It's the 32 gigabyte verbatim store and go. I'm gonna select this and now I can see that my boot order option number one is the UEFI USB that I just flashed my Linux image onto. All right, and one other thing I'll make sure is that secure boot and fast boot are disabled on my computer. So for mine, I select an OS type which automatically disables secure boot, but you'll wanna make sure to disable this because otherwise your computer may start Windows instead of other operating systems. After all that's done, I'm going to the exit tab where I can go ahead and save my changes and restart the computer so it can restart into the installer of my Linux image. So I'm going to hit save changes and reset, confirm those changes, and let things reboot. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. And congratulations, if you made it to this part, you're officially in the installer for Ubuntu desktop to set it up alongside a Windows 10 platform. All right, and the option we wanna select is the Ubuntu option. If you have any problems with getting your graphics to load, you can select the Save Graphics option as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and select Ubuntu. And once things load up, we'll be welcomed by the Ubuntu installer where we can select the language that we wanna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the default English and click the install Ubuntu option. Following that, we can select our keyboard layout. The default English US is fine for me. You can test your keyboard in here. If you type something in, like QWERTY, you should expect to get it out. Otherwise, you can detect the keyboard layout automatically. Once you're finished here, you can go ahead and click continue. Now we get a few options on what type of install we want. You can go with a minimal installation. As it says, it only comes with a web browser and very basic utilities. Otherwise, you get a few extra things with a normal installation. I'm gonna go ahead, since I want the Office software and the media players, I'm going with the normal installation. Other options allows you to install proprietary software for graphics and or for Wi-Fi hardware. So if you have something that requires additional drivers, you might wanna go ahead and select this option. Otherwise, go ahead and hit continue. Here we're being asked, what type of installation type do we wanna go through? We can erase the disk and install Ubuntu only, but that's not the option that we want since we're installing it alongside Windows. We have this option. It detected that Windows Boot Manager is on the same storage disk, therefore it's asking us if we want to install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot. We can select this option, 
but in order to go ahead and see what the layout looks like and to make sure that we're selecting the proper storage space, I'm going to select something else and hit continue. Here I see a few partitions as well as the disk. So dev SDA is the main disk here. You could potentially have multiple disks. So you want to make sure that you're looking at the proper disk space. Up above, it shows me that I have a few partitions here, SDA one, two, three, and four, and then some free space. Well, the free space is where we're interested in installing Ubuntu on. So I'm going to go ahead and search for that free space. And I see it here. It's about 33 gigs. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and use up the entire size as my primary new partition and the location for the new partition will start at the beginning of this space. I'm going to use the ETX4 journaling file system for formatting and then I'm going to select a mount point since this is my root file partition. I'm going to go ahead and select the forward slash and hit OK. Give it a moment and then up top you'll see a new updated scheme for the disk and we can see that there's an SDA5 EXT4 formatted disk partition now at the very end here. Well, this is good so far, but really no changes have been made quite yet, not until we hit install now. We'll continue down here, and this is an important thing to look at, and make sure that you select the proper partition in order to go ahead and install the bootloader on. Well, dev SDA2, it says here is the Windows Boot Manager, and that's where the boot manager for Windows is, and that's where we'd like to install the Ubuntu boot manager as well, known as Grub. So I'm going to select that, and I can double check to make sure my bootloader is getting installed in the proper location by looking up above and making sure that the device I'm trying to go ahead and install the bootloader on is of type EFI, and it in fact is here, and again it says Windows Boot Manager. So now that I've selected the correct device, and I went ahead and confirmed everything looks correct to me, I can go ahead and hit the install now option. Now it's just telling us that it's about to write all the changes to the disk and is telling us that it's just going to overwrite anything located in those areas that we specified. Well, I know I specified the correct partitions, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Next, we're asked for our time zone, so go ahead and select yours. Today I'm in Los Angeles and I'll go ahead and hit continue. Here you can put in your name, mine's Savvy Nick, and then your computer's name, I'm going to call it Savvy Nick as well. Then it asks you for a username. Make sure you put a username and remember it. And then type in the password for that username and go ahead and confirm that password. After you've done that, you can select the login automatically option or the require my password to log in. I suggest doing the second one because if you log in automatically, someone can get into your system without having to put in a password by just rebooting it. Once you've done all this, you can go ahead and hit continue. And at this point, Ubuntu has begun installing. This might take a few moments. Once things have installed, we'll get the installation complete dialog where it says you can restart your computer now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit restart now. And at this point, you can go ahead and as it says, remove your installation media from your computer. And that's the USB, CD, or DVD that you flashed. And after you've done this, you can go ahead and press enter and reboot into your newly installed system. And once things restart here, you'll be welcomed by the Grub bootloader with a few entries here. Now it can time out by itself and automatically pick Ubuntu if you didn't catch it. So you can restart your computer to get back to this. Just make sure you hit a key in order to stop the timeout. And now I have two options here, Ubuntu and the Windows Boot Manager option. First, I'm going to go down to the Windows Boot Manager option just to check to make sure that, that my Windows side is still working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and press that and give it a few moments here to load up. All right, great. It looks like things have loaded up and I can go ahead and log in to my Windows system still. Everything's here. So that's great. We've installed Windows alongside Ubuntu correctly so far. Let's go ahead and restart things once more in order to check the Ubuntu side of things. All right, and now I'll go ahead and select Ubuntu and make sure that this side is working properly. Awesome, now I'm getting my user login screen. So I can go ahead and press enter, type my password in for my user, and congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. You're ready to go ahead and use your Ubuntu desktop 20.04 LTS. Everything's ready to go. First thing you'll run through is the welcome page that just goes through a few things. You can hit next above 
and choose whether or not you want to send system information to Canonical. Hit next, hit next a few more times here. You're ready to go and you can hit done. Now you can start by checking out one of my other videos on Ubuntu or an Ubuntu review. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.